everyone, it's Jennifer from FiberFlux. In this video, we're gonna learn how to crochet this beautiful, but also very easy jade waffle cow. This is full of beautiful texture, but not only does it give visual texture, these, this texture, this, this nice waffle stitch texture provides a lot of warmth to it. Kind of gives pockets of warm air when you wear it, and it keeps you nice and cozy. This is a kind of like a snug cow to wear around your neck, although later on in the video, I'm gonna be showing how to make it bigger. But this has a total circumference of third, uh, excuse me, 20 inches around and a height of 10 inches. So it's nice and snug. You can make it bigger. I'm gonna show you both how to make it taller or, or wider in our rectangle that we'll start with, and also how to make the circumference larger as well. This is a lovely green item too you could wear in the month of March, but it is, it's really nice for um, fall, early spring, winter, what have you. And the inside of it, the reverse, is just as pretty too. So you could wear it on the reverse side as well. We're gonna learn how to make this stitch. We're gonna first talk about the supplies, um, but this is gonna be a nice easy piece to wear and make. And as you can see, it has a nice snugness to it. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a ruler or tape measure is super helpful to measure as you go along. We're gonna be using a 6.5 millimeter K crochet hook for this project. And then let's talk about the yarn a little bit. I have two different yarns pictured here that both make great uh, yarn choices for this project. This is Red Heart with Love in the sage colorway. It's super soft, it's machine wash, comes in tons of colors. Again, this is the sage, and this yarn recommends the 6.5 millimeter K hook, so you'll be just fine with the, the hook that we talked about earlier. Also, I have one almost all the way worked up over here. This is the Red Heart Baby Hugs Medium in the aloe colorway. Um, I'm gonna show this later in the video as we do our seaming and finish work. But uh, again, this is the aloe colorway. And I love baby yarn for things that go around your neck because it's super soft and just a nice feel for around your neck. So either the Red Heart with Love or the Red Heart Baby Hugs Medium are wonderful choices for this project. Again, this is the sage and the aloe. So let's get started. We're gonna do the first couple of rows with our sage yarn so you can see what it looks like in that color. And then we're gonna move on when we're doing the end of our project where we're seaming and doing finish work. We'll grab this one and, and uh, I'll show you that one too. To begin, we're gonna put a slip knot on our hook. So what we wanna do is grab our yarn, wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, Reach in with your hook, bring up a loop, and tighten. I'm gonna zoom way in so you can see everything. Then what we're gonna do is do our starting chain. Now our project has a multiple of three plus two. So what that simply means, if you're not familiar, is when you're doing your starting chain, you're gonna do three plus three plus three plus three, and so forth, until you get the width that you want, and then we'll add two more chains onto the end of that, okay? So our starting chain has a uh, a stitch count, or a, a chain count rather, of 32. So we're gonna make 32 chains to begin. So to make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, and 32. So here is our starting chain. You can get an idea kind of of the width when you make your starting chain. Now I get this question a lot. If you're having trouble uh, with the chains being too tight and you've tried a few times, try to go up a hook size and for the starting chain only, and then when you go to work into the next uh, subsequent rows, you can go back down to the K hook, and that's super helpful. So let's work on row one first. Row one is super easy. What we're gonna do is work a double crochet into the third chain from the hook. So what we're gonna do is, this loop here does not count. Count one, two, three chains, and we're gonna work a double crochet into that third chain from the hook. So wrap yarn around hook, Insert it into that third chain, bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. 
And then what we're going to do next is work a double crochet in every chain across our row that we just created. Okay, so work your double crochets all the way across to the very last chain. So just to refresh, wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into the chain, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, yarn around hook, bring through the last two loops. So I'm going to go ahead and work my double crochets, one in each chain, all the way across, and when we rejoin, we're going to learn how to finish up row one and move on to row two of our waffle stitch. Okay, so just continue with your double crochets all the way across and we'll rejoin in just a moment. And row one is complete. So you just have a little strip of double crochets to begin, a nice solid foundation. So now we're going to get into more of the waffle texture that you see here. For row two, what we're going to do is chain one and turn. Now this is sort of unusual when you have a double crochet uh, stitch sequence. Normally it's more chains when you turn, but for this particular waffle stitch, it's a chain one and turn. So turn your work, and then what we're going to do is work a double crochet in each of the first two stitches. So see these two little posts here? To begin, we're going to work a double crochet into the first stitch, that little loop at the top of the post, right there and right there. So we'll just work a double crochet in each of those first two stitches. And then what we're going to do in the next stitch is work a front post double crochet. If you're not familiar with that, no worries. Just look at that, what I was talking about before with the post, that little column, and then at the top is the stitch. We're going to be working into the the post of this next stitch. So wrap the yarn around the hook and then you're going to take your hook and go up under that post like that. Wrap yarn around hook again, bring it back through the way you came, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops and that makes more of a textured sort of 3D looking stitch. Okay and we're just going to repeat this all the way across, super easy. So work a double crochet in each of the next two stitches so one double crochet in that stitch, one double crochet into the next stitch. Then we're going to work our front post double crochet. Let's do that slowly one more time. Wrap yarn around hook, come up under that post. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it back through the way you came. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. So we're starting to sort of get a little bit of a, a boxy texture. You won't see too much texture on those first couple of rows, but once you do a couple of these sequences, you'll really start to see those pockets that we uh, see in the waffle stitch. Okay, so let's continue. Double crochet into the next stitch. We're just doing this all the way across. Double crochet into the next stitch. I'm going to pick up speed a little bit. Front post double crochet into the next stitch. Then repeat. Double crochet in the next stitch, double crochet in the next stitch, a little bit more yarn. Those center pool balls of yarn are so awesome. Front post double crochet into the next stitch, then repeat. Double crochet in the next stitch, double crochet in the next stitch, front post double crochet into the next stitch, then repeat. Double crochet in the next stitch, double crochet in the next stitch, front post double crochet into the stitch after that, and then do it again. So double crochet in the next stitch, double crochet in the next stitch, front post double crochet into the next stitch, and then repeat. So double crochet double crochet, front post double crochet, and then we're getting towards the end here, and then double crochet in the next stitch, double crochet in the next stitch, front post double crochet in the next stitch, and then we have just two stitches left plus our turning chain, which we'll deal with that in just a sec. So what we're going to do, we just did our front post double crochet. We're going to do a regular double crochet in the next stitch. And in that very last stitch, we're going to do a front post double crochet. And then we are all done with row two.
Okay, so we're starting to get a little bit of texture if you sort of look at it from the side. For row three, once again, we're gonna chain one and turn. Then we're going to work a double crochet in each of those first two stitches that you come to. So work a double crochet in that first stitch. Work a double crochet in the next stitch. Then what we're gonna do is work a front post double crochet in each of the next two stitches. So front post double crochet in the next stitch, front post double crochet into the next stitch. Then what we're gonna do is work a double crochet into the next stitch, and then a front post double crochet in each of the next two stitches. So one front post, two front post, then work a double crochet in the next stitch, and we're just gonna repeat this all the way across. So work your double crochet, work a front post double crochet in the next one, work a front post double crochet in the next stitch, then work a double crochet, then work a front post double crochet in each of the next two. All right, moving right along, move your, or work your double crochet in the next stitch rather, then your two front post double crochets. Now I just wanted to mention as a side note that if you need to back up the video at any point and rewatch things, um, definitely feel free to do that. There's also a slow motion feature you can watch, as or set uh, rather as well if you would like to see this slow um, or slower. Okay, we're just continuing that same sequence. Front post double crochet, front post double crochet, double crochet, then front post double crochet, front post double crochet, and a double crochet. Okay, now we're at the end. So just finish up the row by working a front post double crochet, front post double crochet, just like that, okay? So here's the back. Actually, I showed you the front of this and the back of this one earlier, but this is actually what we're looking at here, where it's like uh, pairs of columns, rather. So it does have a nice texture on this side, too, so you could make it reversible as you wear it. Uh, let me back up a little bit so you can see. Uh, the front here, though, is the, the waffle stitch that we know and love. So if we move on to the next row, Row two, we'll be repeating, remember row two, three, two, three, two, three. If we flip this over to begin work on the next row, you can see it's starting to mimic those waffles, those little squares of waffle stitch, okay? So what you're gonna do for the rest of your piece is just repeat rows two and three, two and three, over and over and over again, all the way up. Now mine here, uh, was about 20 inches. My strip was about 20 inches. So let's switch gears now. Now I've worked my, my rectangle here for 20 inches. What you'll wanna do is when you repeat rows two and three, you wanna end on row two. And the, the reason why is it's gonna give you a nice neat edge. You don't want it to be uh, on row three, it'll sort of look like that. And then when you go to seam it, you won't get that nice ridge across the top. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about here that nice little ridge across the top. You wanna to end on row two, okay? So grab your scissors. And what we're gonna do is fasten off with our hook. So just put your hook back in that loop and then cut the yarn. Actually, let's make our length a little bit longer. Let's make it about 24 inches or so because we're gonna seam it. And then what you can do is wrap the yarn around the hook and pull it all the way through, okay? So just pull that through. And then we're going to turn our rectangle inside out, basically. We're gonna line these edges together and just line everything up nice and neat. Grab your tapestry needle. And we have this other tail from when we began. Just thread your tapestry needle also, I wanted to mention, I only made mine, my rectangle 20 inches long because I wanted it to fit kind of snug up around the neck. If you want it to be longer, 
You could make this into a traditional scarf. You can make it a longer and drapier, but I wanted to mine to be sort of snug, okay? So I'm just threading this into those stitches and then I kind of made a U-turn and I'm gonna come back in the other direction just to lock that tail into place and snip. And then thread your tapestry needle with the long tail that we have from earlier. And you're just gonna hold your edges together. Now remember this waffle texture is facing inward, okay? It's inside out right now. So just line up your edges nice and neat. You can kind of shape it up a little bit, get it uh, uniform. And then just hold your edges together. And you're just gonna go in through the stitches, through the top layer and the bottom layer. And you're just gonna do that all the way across. So go into two layers, make sure each layer you're, you're catching two loops on that. Let me just zoom in a little. See how I have two loops on there, that little V? Just make sure you're doing that for both layers of your sandwich, okay? So go in both layers here with your tapestry needle. And our, our tail is plenty long. You want, it, you want to cut it a little bit longer than you think you'll need. You definitely don't want to run out of yarn while you're trying to seam. Okay, so I'm gonna seam this all the way across and then we'll rejoin in just a moment and we're gonna weave in that very last end, turn it right side out and inspect our handiwork. Now, you might wanna go about an inch or two with your seaming and then turn it out right side out and just make sure it looks how you want it to look, okay? So maybe just give it a little peek to just to make sure things are kind of lining up the way you want them to, to look. So let's seam this across and then we're gonna rejoin and finish up our cowl next. All right, we have a nice, beautiful, neat seam across and I'm just gonna, now what I like to do when I'm seaming is, so you avoid this dip that you sort of get when two edges come together, you inevitably get like a little dip. So I like to kind of go up a little bit and then go down a little bit with my yarn. See, I'm like kind of going a little bit over what I should. See that? Um, and then pull it through. Now don't pull it all the way, leave a little loop there. See here? And then you're gonna take your needle through and without pulling anything out, you can have your nice neat knot. And we may as well do another one just because this is uh, anywhere where you have a seam, when you wear it, um, you'll it'll stress. So you want it to be nice and strong, okay? So just get a nice knot in there. And then what we're gonna do is take our tapestry needle and then we can just, without even cutting the yarn or anything, go along that seam that you just made and just weave that end in nice and neat. And we'll do the same thing. We'll go in one direction and we'll come back with our needle in the other direction, just like that, okay? And then you can grab your scissors and give it a little snip. So now we're gonna have the big reveal where, now like I mentioned before, we can straighten out our seam, straighten out our uh, edges here. Like I mentioned before though, this is just as pretty. I think this is just, has just such a pretty texture also, but we wanna see the cowl, okay? Now our seam looks nice and neat. And the waffle side looks beautiful. This is just such a pretty stitch. It's, it's easy, front post stitches, double crochets and such, but it just is so striking. It just has so much beautiful texture. So that is how you crochet the Jade Waffle Cowl. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.